Do you know the lightsabers that they sell at Disney World? I do. She walked in on me using it. Okay. Hi. Hello? Matt, what's going on? So, last Thursday, I decided to do what uh, a lot of young men do, which is masturbate. Um, And I happen to have a 75-year-old grandmother that lives with us who is highly religious and doesn't believe in any sexual activity, even masturbation, um, Mm -hmm. before marriage. And she happened to walk in on me while I was doing that. And now she hasn't talked to me since. Oh, okay. Why do you think she is not talking to you? Um, she might be, honestly, I, I'm thinking she might be embarrassed. Um, she's also probably really upset because I'm not following what she believes in. Um, I feel like she's she's had a few friends over of hers uh, from the church group, and she uh, she kind of looks at me while whispering sometimes, mm-hmm. and then her friends look, and mm-hmm. I feel like she's talking about me. Mm-hmm. Were you thinking about her friends while you were masturbating? No. Um, actually, I might as well just come out and say it. Um, I'm actually gay and do you know the lightsabers that they sell at Disney World? I do. She walked in on me using it okay um because i that's an interesting factoid because i was going to ask uh after she walked in on you did you finish yeah i was right there man i'm sorry yeah Mm -hmm. Wait, you were right, like like you were about to come? And she walked in, and I was like, holy shit. She closed the door, and I kind of just said, fuck it, in the last two seconds, and mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like the force yeah. is within you. <laughs> Literally. It, it, it was. <laughs> Um, and I can, I can completely understand why that would be something that was awkward to walk in on. I, I just, I, I don't even really need to talk to her about that particular situation, mm-hmm. but it doesn't seem like she wants to talk to me about anything else. Um, does your, does your grandma know that you're gay? No. Mm, okay. Do you think so that's a whole that's a whole other thing because she's very very Christian. She's by the book, um, old school ways. She just she doesn't believe in homosexuality either. Do you think she now thinks you're gay because you were shoving a lightsaber up your ass? Not that that means anything. Definitely, uh, of course not. But definitely, yes. Um. Do you look? Let me ask you a question. I want you to answer this honestly. Do you love your grandmother? Very much. I I, I really do. I mean, I might not uh, agree with everything that she believes in, but she's kind of just been in my life my entire life. So yeah, I do love her. Okay. What do you What do you love about her? Um, she was. She's just been kind of very nurturing growing up um she's always been very loving towards 
I guess, the persona that she thinks that I am. And by persona, I mean I'm not changing everything about my personality. Just kind of, she doesn't know that I'm gay. But with all, Matt? with with, yes. Did you do something? Did your phone. You sound muffled. Does this sound better? It does. Okay, for a second, I thought you put your phone in your ass. <laughs> no, no. Um, I did turn it on speaker though. That that might be an issue. It, but yes, I turned take it, on it take it off of take take it off. By the way, I for your sake, take it off of speaker as well. I feel like this is um a decidedly private conversation that you want to have. Uh, okay, so you love your mother. You know, you love your grandmother. Um. Uh, you love and you think that she loves what you described as the persona which you put on um when it comes to my sexuality yes but literally everything else besides my sexuality is true to myself when i am around my grandmother so she okay. loves me for who i am besides the people that i'm into okay let me ask you a couple questions um so how long has it been since this happened it was Thursday, so tomorrow it'll be a week. Okay. Have you attempted to initiate any conversation with your grandmother about it? I mean, whenever I see her, I do say, hey, grandma, or good morning, grandma, and she just kind of, like, scoffs at me and keeps on doing whatever she's doing. Okay. I'm going to throw an idea out at you. Um, and you can take you can take this or leave this idea because it's a very personal uh, decision and, and thing, of course, but like, you know, look, I asked you if you love your grandma and you said yes. <laughs> and you said you gave a compelling reason as to why. Um, and I, and I don't know. I think if I were you, I'd sit down with your grandma and go, you know, look, grandma, I love you. Here's why. Tell her all the things you told me. Um, and, uh, just really kind of try to have a conversation with her in earnest. Do you know what I mean? Because if you mm-hmm. just walk around resenting each other, uh, then what what's the point of doing that? And I think if you try to reel her into uh, a good faith conversation, uh, one that is born of, of love and genuineness, which it sounds like you have in your heart, uh, perhaps... She could be appealed to, and if not, well, that's I don't know. That's that's interesting, useful information to have. Yeah, I I really think that maybe if I go up to her instead of just saying hello or good morning, if I actually say, "Hey, Grandma, I haven't talked to you in a week," I I'd, I'd really like to just maybe have a conversation with you, and if if things stay the way that they are, so be it. Maybe that might work. I think so too. I think so too. Okay. No, I'll definitely try that. Um, my, I live with my parents too, and they they know that I'm gay. We just kind of kept it for my grandmother, so I, I feel like they'd have my back too, honestly. When you went to the gift shop at Star Wars Land, did you buy it knowing that you were going, like, for the express purpose of shoving it up your ass? Or did you buy it because it was a cool thing, and then you got horny and needed something to put up your ass, and you saw the lightsaber? Um, Kind of a mixture of the both. It was more, um, I went to the gift shop, thought it was cool, thought it was cool that you could build your own lightsaber, and then I found out that it vibrated. And my imagination kind of took me to places that led me to my grandmother finding it in my ass. Mm. You know what? I listen, listen, I hope this leads to a beautiful healing conversation with your grandmother. Um, and may, who knows? Maybe that lightsaber truly uh, may give you more than than you had hoped. Well, thank you so much, Lyle. I really appreciate you. Of course. I appreciate you too, man. Anything else you want to say to the people with the computer before we go? Um, Not to the people of the computer, but I just noticed you last uh, this Monday that you were a little off. I just wanted to make sure that you were doing good. 
Oh, um, I'm doing great sometimes. Okay. And uh, what an what an honor that is to sometimes be doing great. Wonderful. Thank you for calling. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Is this? Am I on? Uh, oh, geez. You're on. You're on. It's me. Hi. Oh wow. Hello. It's pretty this psychedelic. Pretty psychedelic. Look at us happening so um, miraculously to <laughs> be on the planet Earth on this at the same time. Billions and billions and billions Talking of years. Talking to a gecko. Billions and billions and billions of different life life forms. Um and we we exist in such a small, small, small lifespan compared to all the amount of time that's ever existed. And how's about that? We crossed paths in this way. That's pretty. That's pretty psychedelic. It's pretty. Why I, pretty I share in your excitement for that? Um, what's up, <laughs> Stella? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Gek? I actually feel good. I, I didn't feel... I felt pretty bad for this whole day. But now I feel good. This is nice. Oh, good. How are you? I'm uh, just hanging out. Um. Well, listen, Stella. Is there anything in particular that you called in to want to talk about today? Uh, Yeah, actually. I kind of have a... Not, I guess it's kind of a story, but... um. It's kind of something that happened to me, and this happened two years ago, but uh, just kind of still, I haven't told anybody ever, so it's like something I was just kind of wanting to get, get off my chest, I guess. Fascinating. Uh, well, look, if, you, if you're cool with talking about it on a podcast, then I'd, I'd love to hear. Yeah, so um, I, I guess I'll start off how this happened. So I had a boyfriend that I was pretty serious in living with. And we had been dating for about two and a half years, I would say. Um, and one day I was cleaning our room and he wasn't home. And I found a pair of women's panties um, that weren't mine. So automatically I assumed, <clears throat> you know, oh, he's cheating on me. And I brought it up. And every time I brought it up, he would get really upset. And he's like, I'm not cheating on you. And I don't know where those came from. And... Um, so a few months go by or whatever, and it turns out, um, and I fi find out he uh, he likes to wear them for sexual pleasure, and he's a cross-dresser, and he had also been wearing my high heels and my dresses around, um, and he likes to wear makeup, and so it just kind of, it was kind of a shocking, uh, shocking thing to find out that, oh, I wasn't being cheated on, but there's something weird that I wasn't aware of. Fascinating. Oh. How did you react initially to that information? Um, I was kind of shocked. I didn't really know, like, what to say. Because, <laughs> um, like, it just, he told me when he was really drunk that he was a cross-dresser and that he liked to do that when I was at home. So um, when he was sober, I brought it up and um, he was pretty embarrassed, but he's like, yeah, that's something I like to do. And then it kind of progressed on like, oh, will you do my makeup or will you buy me this dress or mm. like, I'm going to buy myself a pair of high heels. Will you come with me? Kind of thing. Mm. So. so it began as a secret that he he kind of vehemently denied and, and wanted to keep from you evolved into uh, he finally admitted it and then evolved into will you actually assist me and be a part of these endeavors which is kind of a yeah. which is kind of fascinating to me and makes sense Right, because look, if this is a thing that's important to this guy, that's a part of his life that he wants to do, and you're his uh, partner, it would make sense to me right. that he has this desire to want you in on it. 
Now, your willingness to right. be in on it is uh, an entirely different is 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 a, is a humongous variable in this. So, talk to me about that willingness or not. So, um, I love him, obviously. So, it was kind of hard at first because it's a little weird. Um, but I like to try and be open minded, you know. So, um, and right now we're long distance, so I haven't actually gotten to buy him any shoes or do his makeup yet now. But um, when he comes back, we do have plans on, you know, I'm going to help him pick out an outfit and then get him some shoes and makeup. And then we're going to go out to eat in public. And I'm kind of nervous about this because I still mm. haven't seen him. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a little different. It's, it's like I'm really open to it. I just I don't know how to feel about it, I guess. But I do love this person very much, and we've been together now for three years. So, but the last few months have been long distance, or I guess, like the past six months have been long distance. So let me get this straight: uh, have you have you ever seen him in the makeup, in the dress, in the heels? Only pictures. So, the plan is to. You see, he dresses up in the the makeup and the dress and the heels um, for the first time, and you guys go out together. Yeah, because I, I I guess I guess <laughs> look, I mean look, I guess in 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 my head, um, just just the event of you uh, uh, seeing him uh, dressed like that for the first time is uh, seems like it'd be pretty big. Um. Yeah, and yeah. and the whole the whole going out in public thing also seems like it'd be pretty big. So this is the combination yeah. of two. <laughs> it's a combination of a it's a it's a it's a it's a double whammy of of two major things in in one go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm kind of nervous. I kind of told him like I'd rather like we do it at home first, and then sure. like and then build up to the going out so it's kind of like i don't know we still gotta make a plan i guess i don't know but it is pretty pretty nerve-wracking because i haven't seen him yet in that way i think it's only pictures so yeah i think it's reasonable to uh uh, you know to to want to take this one one step at a time um tell me more about (laughs) your tell tell me more about your feelings about all of this like are you I I don't know. I'd love to hear more from you about uh what your I don't know what your fears are or what your reservations are or if there are any um you know any part of this that maybe you are actively into or actively against or I just more general feelings from you about the whole situation. Um well my first feeling was, oh my god, I'm glad he's not cheating on me. <laughs> because that's what I thought sure. for a long time. Like, And I just kind of like, kind of ignored it, I guess. Like, I would bring it up, but I thought he was cheating on me. So it was kind of a relief to be like, oh, he's not cheating on me. It's mm-hmm. this, this other thing. And then now it's more of like, okay, um, I am, like, I'm bisexual, so like... Or, like, I guess I'm attracted to the person, not just the gender. So, like, I'm going to love him either way, but it's also, like, sexually, like, if this is what he wants to do in the bedroom. Like, I've never, I mean, I've done some kinky stuff, but never, like, oh, my boyfriend's going to dress up as a girl and wear high heels and and makeup and all this stuff. So, it's, like, Mm -hmm. it's going to be something completely new and I'm open to it. It's kind of exciting, but it's also kind of nerve-wracking, sure. kind of scary for me, because I'm like, sure. I don't know, just a little nervous about it. <laughs> Tell me what aspect about it you're most... Are you nervous that you won't be into it? Are you nervous that it will affect the dynamic of your relationship? Are you nervous that it will affect your sex life? What what, what, what are you kind of um, specifically nervous about? 
Well, I'm nervous that I'm not going to be into it, but I'm I'm more nervous that it's going to be something he wants to do every time. Mm-hmm. In a, in a sexual way, mm-hmm. and it's like. Yeah, because, like, he's a pretty attractive guy. Like, he's he's really muscular. He's really fit, like, kind of a jock. So it's just, it's just kind of different. <laughs> mm. So, and again, I, you know, the answers to the questions I'm asking you, I feel like they, uh, you know, they need, um, uh, you know, trials to have uh, actual data. And it sounds as though you are going mm-hmm. to... Um, have these trials but mm-hmm. you're open you're open to uh you know experimenting with it but you wouldn't want it to become a thing that happens every time yeah mm-hmm. yeah because we have a pretty good sex life i mean at least i thought we did like we do but it's like that's something he was doing in private by himself for sexual pleasure and it's like mm-hmm. I don't want that to be an all the time kind of thing. Mm. I know you said you haven't ever uh, talked to anyone about this. Um, have you? I'm, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> scared to. Huh. Um, who would you want to talk to about this that you haven't? I, I, I suppose like friends or. Um, well, my best friend is my sister, and, like, I kind of told her something weird was going on, but I didn't tell her the details, and also, he doesn't want me to tell anybody, because he's not comfortable with people knowing anything. Okay. So, like, <laughs> I don't want to, like, betray his trust by, like, telling somebody that knows him. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's kind of, he's, it's kind of his big secret, I guess. Okay. Um. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think I don't know. This is a really tough thing because you clearly care a lot about this person enough to try, right? You can always. Right. I feel like you can always make the decision to try stuff. You can't. Yeah. Make the decision as to what you like or what you feel good about. But I feel like you can always right. make the decision to try. Right. So, good on, you know, I think it's cool that you're in love enough and open minded enough to try. But I hope that. Right. <laughs> you're not afraid of the results of the trial because those, the results of the trial, the feelings, those aren't, I feel like they're not really negotiable. You know, you like what you like or you, and you don't like right. what you don't like. Right. And I, I mean, and, right. and those are, those are matter of fact things, I assume. Mm-hmm. And so, and so I wouldn't be so scared of it. You know, it's just information. Yeah. That makes sense. Do you feel like uh, you can communicate well with him about all this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we uh, we communicate pretty well. And like I've told him I'm a little nervous, but like he's like, oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be great. Like, and I'm just like, but what if it's not? <laughs> like, what if it doesn't go up? But then it's like, at the same time, if it doesn't go well, I feel like he can still do those things in, by himself in private. But then it's like, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't mind, but I also don't want to like not be able to satisfy him sexually if, if it's something I can't share with him. Mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, it's weird. I know. <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't, but, but I, don't, I, I, I don't think any of this is weird on your side or his side because... Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is a heavy thing to think about, but like, look, the, the, I wouldn't be so afraid of the result. I wouldn't be afraid of the, I would not be afraid of the results of this information because it's kind of good news, no matter what, to know these things. And what I mean by that 
is that, look, if you find out that you're not into this stuff, and he is, Mm -hmm. and you guys aren't compatible with each other in that way, that's good to know. It's always good to that's not that's the 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 um uh, rising of that what the fuck surfacing of that information is good for both of you uh right because you both desire to be with people who can satisfy uh you so it's good for both of you and look if the results of the trial yield positive results and you like uh fucking him when he's in his uh you know, makeup and heels and dress. That's all. That's all. That's also great news because now you guys can do right. that all the time and, and be happy. So I would not be afraid of the <laughs> results because it's good news no matter what. Okay. I don't know if you agree with that or if you can see that right now, but that's my feelings. No, it's it's definitely uh, helpful. Thank you. <laughs> um. Well, it sounds like you guys have a good communication with each other, you know? I mean, this is tough shit for both of you guys. Right. Um, are there any other aspects of this that you wanted to talk about? Um, no, honestly, I just wanted to tell somebody. It feels good to, like, just talk about it, because it's like, you couldn't tell anybody in my in my personal life that I can tell the internet, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Stella, good. where are you guys going to go on your date? Are you going to go somewhere fancy? Um, I, you know, I don't know. We haven't gotten that far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably somewhere nice and fancy. So I wear a, a nice dress. That's cool. I don't know. Is it not nice to have somebody that you can... Uh, uh, pick out, go shopping with. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm reaching for straws now. Uh, well, Stella, thank you very much for calling. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, no, just thank you for being you. And, uh, yeah, hope everyone has a good night. Take care, Stella. Thank you. Bye. You know, um... A big secret that uh, I have is that occasionally, for my sexual pleasure, I will paint my face green and dress up like a gecko. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing perfectly, yeah? Uh, Dominic, 21 years old, from Australia. No, Austria. Austria, they screwed it up. Yeah. No, 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 I screwed, no, 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 no. I want you. I want to, the oh. call screener wrote Austria. I said Australia. Okay, I'm gonna take the L on that. Oh, um, but also no every yeah. every place is the same to me. So, um, uh, yes, it makes sense. Austria right. is the youngest. Says here you're the youngest therapist in the European Union. And you called yeah, in to, sc- to school me on psychology. Yes, sir. On All behavioral right. patterns. All right, hit me. Now, hold on one second. I have to empty out my cigarette. Now, my Never client, seen. you know what is very interesting about you as a, this uh, geck, the therapist gecko, yeah? Hit me. You, the interesting part, is that there are so many, these, the most of the callers that you get, at least from what I have seen in the last, uh, Jesus Maria, three hours, you should honestly have a different job. I do not know why you do this, but it is the, the behavior, the, the behavior of these people is very similar, yeah? You can recognize mm. that. Um, most of, I mean, the last, uh, before the fish guy, which was probably a Snickers commercial, there was, um, there were two people who had problems with either horniness onto fake characters or, yes. uh, bettering themselves 
by some video game of an anime figure which kills themselves. Yeah, sure. So you may you may be questioning yourself, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Well, my friend, I will tell sure. you. What what th- these people are doing is something that is very normal. In behavioral patterns, uh, this is like, uh, which is a good example. It basically, the average, well, I, I'm assuming that most of these men are American, yeah? They're uh, degenerates to an extent. They're not, um, they're unhappy and they're, they're miserable people. And any form of physical, emotional, or behavioral affection is such a grace to them, yeah? Sure. You get you, you get my point? Uh, so, I, I guess, what what are you trying to say exactly about any of this? What I'm trying to say is that... Um, the the colors that you get are uh-huh. uh, and I I would never and I really do not understand uh, the concept of this is the colors that you get are very depressing to listen to. I do not know <laughs> if they're joking. I'm not okay. assuming they're joking because that makes okay. it worse. Sure. Um, but Jesus, I mean, I'm not even. Holy. What? Oh God! It is. It, it, it's so sad. It's very sad. Okay. It's, it's like. Well, what? Are, yeah. Well, uh, you're okay. So you are the the youngest therapist in the European Union. So you're you're a, you're a licensed therapist. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's me. So you, I, I assume that you have you have clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you you have clients who come to you, and I assume tell you things that are depressing. Yes. Yes. And wh- how do you, what do you make of the people that talk to you about depressing things? Well, see, this is uh, the difference is that, um, and most most people that are depressed is obviously men, which we can clearly see in this. Oh, I hate the word society, but society um in our the modern era of civilization men are more and more depressed due to the way that um the behavior between men and women have changed between social media and this this ideology of let's stay in the little cave and watch a a gecko talk to depressing americans and what i what i tell these people that are depressed that are suicidal that, that cut themselves which I, I i i have to see the embarrassment in front of me you know i have to see their cuts yeah embarrassing and it's it's i they i they i mean it's, it's like the only thing that i can tell them is what are you doing i mean look at yourself for a second and and question yourself is this the way you want to live do you want to be known as the Arschloch that keeps on cutting himself, stays in his house 24-7, uh, plays some terrible game that just came out for 60 euro, and it's sad. It's sad. Well, uh, let, me, let me ask you a question. So, um, yeah. how did you become the youngest well, therapist in the European Union? What, what is the process of that? Uh, well, the process of it, uh, and it's uh a little bit of bribery but it's mostly to do with that i graduated very early from school okay but uh, you know yeah and so, um yeah so so uh, if you're not finished i want to let you finish no no go ahead go ahead I, well, so I, so I into the oven. what um so okay so you see people you listen to people who you know, yeah. have problems, maybe they're suicidal or they cut yeah. themselves or, yeah. you know, have, have behavior yeah. problems. What is mm-hmm. it that you have, what what have you learned in your education and in your, what are things that you uh, had to 
learn to become a licensed therapist? What have you learned about uh, why people do these things and what you in your job might be able to do to help them? That that is the, the problem is that our our at least in the the way that therapy works at least in Austria or in Germany, in in the in the old Europe where the old men smoke cigarettes in front of the bars and uh, have a cafe and things like that in this there's a very old type of psychology you know in the movies when you sit down and you say oh my therapist I'm 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 sad. You know, they sit in one of those chairs that you have, right? This is the kind of therapy that we are taught. And it is not an effective type of therapy. And therefore, many therapists in the modern era have to improvise. And they have to, they have to be human. They have to be social. And the only thing that I can, that I can tell them or that, that I can explain to a person that is depressed, for example, is, I mean, for, of course, for every situation is different. You have to get to know a person before you know what to say. Because they, because the way that my, at least most therapies here in uh, Europe work, I have no idea about America, is that they basically explain to you who they are as a person. And if they do not sure. effectively tell you the way that they think, of course, as a therapist, I have to, of course, calculate with my brain, of course, how they think, what they do, um, if I speak this, how they, will they behave, things like that. But still, what is very important is that uh, people think that therapy is a quick stop and go, like a cheap 7-Eleven in that neighborhood. They can just come in, grab a bag of chips, and they're not hungry anymore. Sure, and yeah. that's what people expect. And when I see these people come in, like I see, the, I saw this um, 13 year old kid, bipolar disorder, uh, takes antidepressants, things like that. And uh, they talk about different things, which I can't, uh, you know, say. But they clearly have problems. And the biggest, the, really, the biggest problem that there is, is this, this idea of self identity. Who am I? What do I want in life? Because all they see is they see these other people. They glor they glorify other people, sure. and they want to become this person. But it is, it, it it's like uh, when you know those like eight year old kids that watch Mr. Beast. You're never going to be Mr. Beast. You're ne I mean, my father told me I was never going to be a Slatan Ibrahimovic. You know, I'm not going to be a, a soccer player. Yeah. Sure. It, it's not, it, it's not something that's capable, and they have to so, understand this. It's so one of the points. Yeah. It's, so you feel like people are having a, are are having this dissonance where they they want to be something that you feel is is not within the scope of their reality, and that's bringing them unhappiness. Right, because they 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 put themselves on such a high shelf. They put themselves on such a high shelf, and they expect sure. themselves. Oh, if I'm not like this, then I'm not normal. And that's why I have yeah. to get my hair colored to get attention. That's why I have to cut myself because I hate myself as a person. Mm -hmm. Now, this is different with everybody, but this is like a very large group, at least of, uh, I'd say, this new era, the, the new generation of people. Um, my okay. age, approximately a bit younger. Well, let me, can I ask, I'm curious about you as a person. Yeah. Dominic, yeah, what what are what do you, do you, do you have problems? I'm sure. I mean, everyone has problems. What what? So the like, only, I mean, I'm an I mean, I'm an extreme alcoholic, as most uh, German or Austrian men are. <laughs> okay, but um, smoker, of course. Um, and when I was a teenager, you know, deal a little bit of drugs, but that's normal in the tenth district. But uh, otherwise, I mean, I myself am doing fine. I have a, you know, I have a girlfriend, yeah, and it's mm -hmm. it's all fine. I mean, I, I I don't do anything really except for help people, because the only thing that I care about 
is others and not myself. Other people come first. That might be a negative, but to me, it is a positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. I mean, so when, so when you do experience any kind of problems or issues mm. or, or how, you know, however small or big they are, what? How do you deal with? Uh, difficult things in your life? Um, well, due to the way that I have been raised, I was raised by an old Jewish man, my father. That's why I speak a bit of Yiddish. That's why it, what the chat says. Lahayim. Um, uh, I don't even know what that means. I only know a couple of words. Okay. Uh, swear words or, you know, kindalaya, things like that. He taught me the old way of thinking the old way of how men should behave they should keep things inside of themselves and they should be aggressive when they want to uh, or they can just pen it up you know the old way the 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 typical stereotypical house speeder uh from the 1970s way i guess mm -hmm. right sure and um as i like the ideology I like the ideology not because it it um, because it affects other people. I like the ideology because it teaches a man, and this is this is something that uh, also has died with the age. Is this idea okay. that a man has to keep to himself? Yeah. Okay. He has to he has to clear his own bullshit, as they okay. say. Okay. So, yeah. so you. And that's the way so I do. So you, so you kind of take out of that, like, so your father kind of told you that, like, men kind of keep their feelings inside and, like, right, keep right, it bottled right. up, and yep. that's kind of yep. what you've been doing, and that's kind of what yeah, you've been yeah. doing? Yeah, and now, of course, this has ruined, um, I think, two generations of men, approximately, but I think that it is a, if, if you know how to, it's like with uh, a hand grenade, if you make sure that you don't set it off, it'll be fine. Put it in the fridge. You know, it, it's not going to hurt anybody. Okay. Yeah. So, has, right. so this this method for you for you at least this this method of, you know, a man should keep in feelings inside mm -hmm. and and kind of yeah. grow up and all these. This has worked for you and been a positive thing for you in your life. Well, I. And uh, yes, uh, I do have to actually admit to something before I continue my conversation. I am inebriated as hell, um, so I might have said some uh, what is this, retardations. I don't know what it is, but okay. you know, just uh, for the context, I should have mentioned that earlier, probably. But yeah, okay. yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, repeat the question because I'm too forgetful to think okay by the way man listen i just so you know if you don't want to you know, talk on a podcast right now because you're drunk i would oh understand. i really do not care i mean i have nobody knows my name anyway so it's fine i mean okay. nobody in the world knows me except for my clients okay. and they don't really okay. give a shit um yeah i'm trying to think of what i was asking you i was asking you you said that uh okay you said your father told you that uh, yeah. you know, to be a man, you gotta hold your feelings mm -hmm. in and kind of very traditional masculine stuff. And I'm asking you, um, the the stuff that he told you has it been working for you, and has it been a positive thing for you in your life? Um, yes, but uh, of course, with with everything, um, you have to learn. When I was a child, it was of course a problem because it was because when you're a child, you you're you want to be social, you want to do things, you want to scream out to people, you want to you you know how you behave when you're young, and um, that was a big problem because my father always told me to shut my mouth and um, to never to never you know not to. Not to be a loud mouth, yeah. And okay. it, it was a problem for me for, uh, I'd say, a few years. But then, after a bit of self-analyzing, I believe that I have perfected this method, I guess, to an extent. Okay. So you've, you've perfected your own version of the way of being that your father taught you? 
Um, yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, is that yeah. is that uh, kind of the 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 type of mythology mythology methodology that you you uh, share with your clients? Mm, no, because the I'm a I'm a very honest person, and even okay. even from a therapist, of course, as a therapist, you have to be a bit careful. You can't just say, "Oh, you, you look stupid." You should stop fucking cutting yourself. You can't just say that out loud, right? Okay. But um, of course, in you have to like jump around the fence with things, and you have to say, "Oh, do it like this, do it like that." I, I but I do not really. I, I'm not. I'm not like a dictator of uh, a certain time uh, in the 30s. I don't make them do things. You know. Okay. That's not what I'm going for. Yeah. Sure. 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 Um. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I know this is a very weird call, by the way. Uh, I don't. This is why. Why? Why do you feel like this is a weird call? No, because. <laughs> Because uh, it, it's just some drunk therapist calling a gecko. I have no idea. That you know what? Now, yeah, that is that is uh, right. That is yeah, apparently a little funny. Yes, I agree. Indeed, um, yeah. Huh? Do you feel? Can I? Do you yeah. feel like this? This kind of uh, the the stuff that you were talking about your father teaching you mm-hmm. um, from Europe mm-hmm. is that like a European thing? Like from Europe perspective do you feel like that's kind of a popular sentiment um, in europe more so than in america with, well my father um my father is an old man yeah and he is uh he he was he got kids when he was uh older yeah he's like uh, 64 or something i don't even remember but uh, it's um he he, he has a more 70s and 60s era of thinking from Europe specifically, I assume, because uh, I mean, I don't think he really watches any 80s American television in his age. So, no, I do not believe that it's uh, an American way of thinking. I believe that it, because specifically the, the way that um, that he taught me was, was very proper, a very it's like uh, what the British call posh. It's like a posh way of thinking, I guess. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, Mental. So for you, mm-hmm. like... Alright, so so look, I mean, you became a licensed therapist at 21. Mm-hmm. Uh, why, why, yeah. and for, for you, man, what's like the... What's the rest of your life look like? What do you, what do you aspire towards? What well, do you um, do? Well, what I what I mostly do is uh, I'm an audio technica. I, I do not exactly know the translation. Uh, I an audio technic. Uh, uh, an audio I repair, technician. Uh, you're right. I repair cassette machines, record players, things like that. Okay, you do that like as a hobby in addition to the therapy. No, uh, I sell it. You know, it, it's like the shitty knockoff version of eBay, but for Austria. Okay. And uh, I do it there and stuff. It's it's fun because I have I always have seventies headphones. I have a lot of old school old school technology everywhere. And German, of course, is well built stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's most that's mostly all I do. If I'm not doing the other. Hmm. Yeah. So you're mostly either doing your therapy or recording cassettes. Yeah. Uh, or not recording, but repairing electronics. Yeah. Um, and hanging out with your girlfriends. Yeah, yeah. Girlfriends, okay. uh, multiple, right? <laughs> okay. No, I do um, not get any women except one. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Well, fascinating. Why do you say you said at the very beginning you have you don't know why I have this job? Why do you say that? And I won't be offended <sighs> whatever you say. It's Look, okay. So I what I find so inter- fascinating because uh, in in Germany and in Austria, which is 
kind of the same thing, but you will be shot if you say that. Um, there's like, a, there's not a lot of good comedians. There's not a lot of also, sm I don't know what you would call yourself, but I, I it's a, a bit small of a comedian, I guess. Because okay. it is, it's it's a concept. It's a small concept. You have a little bit of a show. I do not know how big you are, really. But okay. it's it's so interesting that that such a simple concept of some American fellow sitting on a couch talking to people with a hotline, mm -hmm. as if it's 1995, and I'm uh, watching like uh, some Christmas specials, and then it's a oh oh you can call Santa if you call this number, you know? <laughs> okay. I mean. Yeah. It's mental. It, it's <laughs> mental, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, mean, I think undeni I, yes, undeniably, yes, yeah, yeah, undeniably, yeah, undeniably, yeah. a little bit, a little bit, yeah. uh, a little bit wild of an idea for sure. Undeniably. So. May I, may I ask? May I ask something that that potentially is uh, a bit inappropriate? <sighs> sure. I'll, I'll, okay. Let me let me let me get the soft version. With with this with this job that you have. Uh -huh. Do you get more of an appeal with women or not? Oh, you're asking. Um, look, I mean, the entire reason why I um, dress up in a in a gecko costume and paint my face green, you know, it's always been, um, you know, to to appeal to women. <laughs> well, I mean, from the start, we do look like a a bad reenactment of. Uh, what's his name? Jim Carrey's The Grinch, right? <laughs> okay, I'll I take mean, that. It's, I'll it's, take it's, that. <laughs> it's um, I, I mean, honestly, I love your enthusiasm, even uh, well, thanks, with man. this conversation. Honestly, uh, you're you're a good man, and I hope that even when you when you're 58 or whatever age uh, you die of uh, plastic uh, toxication or whatever the, the Americans call it. Um, you sit retired in your yacht with a, a shape like a gecko and you smoke a nice gecko shaped cigar, you know, this is well, the thank life. you. Thank you, Dominic. I appreciate that blessing from you. I feel like I don't get a whole lot of uh, non-American callers, so it's nice to hear from you and get your perspective on well, things. Well, you, you do have an American basis, a very big American basis, yeah. Hey, get this! I'm coming to Europe. I'm not going to. I mean, I'm going to Germany. I'm not going to uh, oh, Austria. They, well, when you say Europe, that, that's like eight different countries. I mean, where where in it's Europe? It's more than eight. It's more than eight. Uh, fucking where are you Germany, going? Amsterdam, <laughs> Sweden, Norway. Oh, uh, all sorts Sweden. of places. Perfect. Sweden. I'm half Swedish. That's why my accent sounds kind of fucked. Um. Look, to be honest, I probably couldn't tell the difference between an Austrian accent and a Swedish no, accent. No, no, but yeah, it's it's such a it, it, it's like it's like when American because when an American says Europe, that's that's pretty like it's grace the entirety of the union. You know, it's like oh, I've, oh you know, it's just a bad taste in the mouth. That's like calling uh, Chicago the same as New York. It's like oh, they're right next to each other. You know. Well, listen, uh, yeah. Dama, it's probably like, what, 5 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, you yeah don't worry. Yeah, it's 7.22 a.m. I've been on hold since like <laughs> 6 or 5. I have not slept, so I don't really <laughs> well, care. Well, well, uh, well, look, I'm not a real therapist, but you should probably go to oh, sleep. I know. I know. That, that, that's why I wanted to insult you a little, explain a little <laughs> things. You know, a little bit of a, what's it called? Um, I don't even know the name. I'm too drunk. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Um, whatever it was. The call, may do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, whatever it was, thanks for uh, gracing mm -hmm. me with it. And uh, I hope you have a good rest of your morning. Uh, I'm always on speed. I'm always on speed dial. So call the number if you need real therapeutic facts. You know, I I, I sure <laughs> will. Thank you, Dominic. Perfect. Thank <laughs> you. Well, all right. I guess if I ever want to um, start a uh, European therapy gecko branch, we have a guy.